How's it going? I'm Jared Gillis. Welcome to another All About RVs. Today, we're gonna to be looking at a problem that the RV industry has been facing, and specifically, a problem that Battleborn Batteries is facing right now. There's forum posts, social media posts, and videos put out of a potential problem with their batteries. And after digging into it and calling them, this strangely reminds me of the frame flex issue that's been going on. But the problem that Battleborn is facing right now is there's reports of people out there having excessive heat on the positive battery term. Terminal. But we're gonna break this down. We're gonna break this down into what you should know and what you should look out for. So now this problem for Battleborn bubbled to the surface when Will Prowse was testing a used battery and opened it up to, to show a problem where that terminal was overheating. His channel is all about inverters and batteries, solar, and even electric vehicles. So everything kind of inside that realm. And his experience in building batteries, tearing down batteries, and his critical eye has made him a go-to resource in this area. And has probably even pushed the market to having more budget batteries out there that have higher quality because people are paying attention to them. And I know that Battleborn batteries is kind of the standard that everything has been measured against. So I know there's a lot of Battleborn batteries out there in RVs and not everybody is gonna be following just that specific topic. So I thought it'd be good to get this information out there and where things are at currently. With all the videos that we've done on off-grid solutions, battery buyer's guide, I felt like this was important enough to talk about. I'll put links down in the description to his videos. So if you wanted to check those out, I think they're definitely worth a watch, but I'll just give you a quick overview of what he's finding and where things are at. So what he has found is that damage inside the battery from the bus bar through a bolt and a piece of plastic to the terminal on the battery. It's evident to see that there, that plastic is deformed from heat, which made the connection even more loose, creating even more heat. And at that point, that battery is not safe anymore. But the story kind of continues on because we have a response from Battleborn and we have additional testing on new Battleborn batteries, which actually opened up another can of worms. Now, Battleborn obviously saw this because they put out a response to their affiliates because in Will's video, he did not mince any words. That is scary. That is not good. Holy cow, I didn't know it was that bad. So now here's that email with the four main bullet points. The first one is the aluminum nut used in our 100 amp hour packs positive terminal is a purpose built thermal fail safe. The second one is a, a description of how that works. It is engineered so that the plastic deforms and disconnects when excess heat is present at the terminal. This protects the internal cell structure by interrupting the current, preventing further heat buildup and thermal runaway. There is a second video that Will put out showing that it didn't actually disconnect. I, I don't, I fail to see how it actually does do a disconnect out there by melting that plastic. It it looks like it just creates more heat by creating a, a weak connection. I, I don't see an actual disconnect in that area. So I'm failing to see that. But the third bullet point is the safeguard exists for conditions created in the field, such as loose external connections, systems operating outside of specification or uncontrolled short circuits. So basically they're saying something outside of the battery has activated the safeguard, which is why the battery is overheating now. So something happened externally to cause this to happen inside the battery. And now we're getting heating inside the battery from this weak connection. Now, this is vital to understand what Battleborn just claimed there. And I made this mock-up so that we can ask the two vitally important questions. So what we have here is we have a bus bar, we have a piece of plastic that represents the plastic on the inside of the battery. We have the bolt that goes through there. And then this represents the terminal that goes to the outside of the battery. And this is the way that it's connected on the inside of the battery that they're calling a fail safe. Typically, when you're connecting a wire to a bus bar, you want the best connection you possibly can. So you have that metal to metal contact, and then you put hardware on for a secure connection. What we have inside the battery is that piece of plastic sandwiched in between there. So now all the power goes through the bus bar, has to go through the bolt, since we have the plastic here to insulate from the actual bus bar, and then it's delivered to the terminal. And what's happening in the batteries that are having the problem is this piece of plastic is melting. When that melts, it creates a loose connection here. When you have a loose connection, you're going to get a lot of heat. So the first question is, 
how is this a fail safe? How does that actually disconnect if that plastic melts? We just have a loose connection. The second question is, was the original loose weak connection or undersized wire or draw too high coming from here, creating that heat here that melted that plastic? Or did this happen from normal use on the inside of the battery? So where did this original heating of this plastic come from? So we're gonna dive more into that, but let's get into the rest of that email. Fourth bullet point, it is one of several intentional protective mechanisms within our packs and is necessary for UL listing standards. I did cringe because it reminded me of the FrameFlex issue is it felt like denial and let's blame the end user. I think RVers are looking for a company that's gonna stand up and say, hey, we got a 10 year warranty. We believe in our product. We wanna stand behind it. If you got a problem, contact us. Let's get it taken care of. And I think the people that bought Battleborn batteries would say that is why I bought a Battleborn battery because they're not the cheapest. They are on the higher end for the price scale. And there's batteries out there that are lighter, smaller, cheaper with more features packed into them. Because they've been such a popular battery, they're still on our battery buyer's guide because you can see how, how things line up. When you are buying a battery, there's a lot that goes into it. Size, space, weight, cost is a huge consideration, but there's a lot of things of having it fit inside your style and your RV. And you can see that that one's really high on the, the price scale. But the other part of it is we want to find out what has caused the failure here. Because what I'm seeing here is a battery that's not safe to use and it failed to disconnect if that is a safeguard. Now I do have some tips of things you should be checking on your RV that really don't take hardly any time at all to make sure that your battery is safe in there. And I also have some opinions and things that you should look for if you have a Battleborn battery because should you pull it out of use or is it okay to continue using it? So I'm gonna show you what to check and what to look for. Which brings us to today's sponsor that helps you in these situations where there might be a failure and that's Waggle. They're the popular pet monitor to let you know when there is a failure at your RV so that you can make sure that your pet is safe. They have their new monitor that gives you real-time temperature alerts, humidity and heat index, also letting you know if you lose power inside the RV and has GPS tracking as well. They also have a lineup of cameras. They have Wi-Fi versions, they have cell-based versions. That way you can check on your pet even if you lose Wi-Fi and power. So if you're interested in a monitor for giving you an alert, if you lose power or have a problem at your RV, use code MOBRIC to save 70%. If you're interested in some of their cameras, put in code JARED to save 15%. Some of their cameras are for indoors and outdoors. I was testing it outdoors and got to see some interesting animals running around the outside of the RV. But it's a very dependable solution to make sure that our pets are safe. So thanks to Waggle for sponsoring this video and being able to check on our RV when we're away from the RV. But there are things that we can do to check on our system and our RV to make sure that it's as safe as it possibly can be. Number one, something we can do is we can check the temperatures on our electrical system, specifically the battery. So finding a problem area, I used a thermal camera. I got our inverter system up and going, pulling a, a couple of thousand watts so I can see if I had any weak areas and any hot spots. It's nice that these thermal cameras are a lot cheaper now because it gives you that visual of what you can look for and what you can zone in on. These infrared thermometers are nice so that you can check different points, but unless you check the right point, you might be missing a, a hot spot. So both are great tools. This just gives you a, a better overall view of what you're looking at. And I think the second question people would be asking is if I had Battleborn batteries, is this a danger for my RV? The answer to that question is probably multi-layered, but the short answer is probably not for the majority of people, but you should check. Here's what I mean by multi-layered. If your system is sized properly, wired properly, and torqued down properly, and you're not pushing it to its limits, so the majority of RVers out there aren't usually pushing their system to the maximum up and down when you're charging and when you're drawing from it, and that's where you're gonna generate more of the heat. So if you're not really pushing your system and pushing those batteries, the, the chance of this popping up for you would be pretty small. But to be clear, that's not me making excuses for the things in the design that I'm seeing in these teardowns that I don't like. It's explaining why I don't think everybody is seeing this problem in their system. Because it's important. If they advertise that you can charge at 50 amps continuously and you can discharge at 100 amps continuously, that's what they recommend not exceeding those. It should be able to do those continuously back to back. If that's what it's advertised at, that's what it should be able to do. We've tested lots of equipment, pushing it to the limits. If it advertises it, it should be able to accomplish it. 
And that's why I like that Will's doing additional testing, which was more kind of bad news for Battleborn. He wanted to do this with a new battery and see if he could replicate it, if it had the proper size wiring and used within their recommendations, will this same problem arise? Problem is he found a new problem where he wasn't really able to pull capacity doing this back to back. So I'm sure there's more coming, but something that I did is I called them because I wanted to see what their response was when you call into customer service or the sales side of Battleborn. Hey, we're calling Battleborn Batteries in a recorded line. My name is Matthew. How can I help you? The only time a terminal ever gets damaged, we always find is undersized wiring, the inverter is too big, something came loose that wasn't supposed to. Like the battery itself, that's what he's describing in the video is not a thing the batteries do unless they've been damaged externally because that's part of the listing. So from these phone calls, the, the conversations that I have with them, it is what I expected. I, it wasn't far from what I would expect typical to be. But overall, I think this is a problem that a lot of companies have. When they see a, a criticism or a potential problem with their product that's out there, their knee-jerk reaction is to get ahead of it and say that there isn't a problem. When we see that response, it doesn't exactly pass the sniff test. I get it, it's not me, it's not my money, but if I were to give them a recommendation, I would say to the people out there with Battleborn batteries, if you got a problem, get in contact with us. Let's get you taken care of. And we're gonna look at the design to see if there's a better way that we can have a safeguard that they say should be there actually works better so that it disconnects when you want it to disconnect. But I get it, that could cost more than just hopefully letting the whole thing blow over. But in today's day and age, with the amount of communication, forums, comments out there on social media, things just don't blow over quite as easy as they used to. It's definitely gonna be interesting to see where this goes, but ultimately I hope that Battleborn steps up and takes care of their customers. So I think that's gonna do it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hope that it helped you out in some way, seeing the, the things and the tests that are coming out that could affect you and what you can do to make sure that your system is operating safe and effectively. So as always, if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we will see you next video. Take care.